When banks on Wall Street and responsible custodians are managing Bitcoin and the industry takes its eyes away from all of the shiny little tokens that have distracted and, and demolished shareholder value, I think the industry moves to the next level and we 10x from here. And so we're bullish. In the world of finance and cryptocurrency, MicroStrategy co-founder and executive chairman Michael Saylor gears up for massive gains on his company's balance sheet and their Bitcoin holdings. What began with a significant purchase of $250 million in Bitcoin has evolved into a series of multi-million dollar acquisitions, the latest with another $5 million just last month. MicroStrategy's Bitcoin portfolio now sits at 158,000. During his conversation with CNBC, Saylor gives his Bitcoin prediction for 2024 and the much-anticipated SEC approval of a spot Bitcoin ETF and the recent proposed rule change by the Financial Accounting Standards Board. He believes these developments will significantly influence Bitcoin's price and continued adoption throughout 2024 and beyond. Let's get right into the latest interview with Michael Saylor as he discusses the partnership between MicroStrategy and Microsoft, his outlook on Bitcoin and the ETF approval, and how this will affect the crypto market in the coming months. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content we do here on this channel. Let's get right into the video. You can never have too much Bitcoin. <laughs> we're, uh, we're big Bitcoin bulls. Uh, our thesis is that uh, Bitcoin is digital property, but without the risks and uh, liabilities of, of commercial real estate. It's a digital commodity without the risks and the liabilities of gold. It's a digital tech investment without the risks and the liabilities of big tech. We're really excited about our partnership with Microsoft and AI. We've, we're the first BI company to put AI into our product line. And it's, uh, it provides great artificial intelligence boost to our business intelligence business. We're going to use it to grow the business by acquiring new customers. And also it's accelerating cloud um, adoption within our customer base. Does the introduction of an ETF help or hurt investor ap appetite for MicroStrategy specifically? Well, I think it's going to help. It's going to, it's going to accelerate adoption, and it's also going to accelerate institutional awareness and education efforts of Wall Street to teach the 99% of the investors that don't know about Bitcoin uh, what it's all about. MicroStrategy is a differentiated offering. Um, I think spot Bitcoin ETF is a great thing for investors, but we don't charge a fee. We use intelligent leverage and we can generate a tax deferred Bitcoin premium for our investors. So for people that are really long term bulls on Bitcoin, we represent a pretty attractive option or alternative to a spot Bitcoin ETF. Presumably you think the SEC is going to be forced to approve this. Can you give us a time scale uh, on when this might happen? Long term, uh, I, I guess the most important point to be made is uh, institutions are adopting Bitcoin. It's highly likely that it will happen, if not by first quarter of next year, at some point in the coming 12 months. And we know the halving is coming. So if you've got a, a 12 month to 48 month time horizon, this is a pretty ideal entry point into the asset. The ongoing adoption of Bitcoin by governments, institutions and media signifies a broader recognition of its value. Me? However, Saylor asserts this journey is just beginning comparing the initial years to the current widespread interest and investment with a giant spotlight on Bitcoin ETFs. Saylor highlights this being a significant development in the financial ecosystem. He also suggests that BlackRock, under the guidance of Larry Fink, will lead the charge in obtaining regulatory approval for a Bitcoin ETF. This move, he contends, will underscore Bitcoin's enduring relevance as an asset and its potential as a hedge against currency devaluation. Well, m most of the natural sellers of Bitcoin in the market right now are Bitcoin miners, and they have to sell to pay their electricity bill and their capital cost and retire their debt. That's about a billion dollars a month worth of selling into the market. Um, the protocol forces that to be cut in half as of about next April, late April. So you're going to see $12 billion of natural selling per year converted into $6 billion of natural selling a year. At the same time as, as things like spot Bitcoin ETFs increase the demand for Bitcoin, 
So that's why all of us are fairly bullish over the next 12 months. Demand's going to increase, uh, supply is going to contract, and this is fairly unprecedented in the history of Wall Street. Long term, this is going to open the door for corporations to adopt Bitcoin as a treasury asset and create shareholder value with their balance sheets. I mean, the big dilemma in the market today is the magnificent seven. Seven companies are generating all the shareholder returns and 7,000 companies are struggling to create shareholder value. MicroStrategy's secret is we're leveraging our balance sheet as well as our P&L. We've got more than $5 billion of assets on our balance sheet and Bitcoin is growing at three or four times the cost of capital. So imagine what happens if other companies are able to use their balance sheets as assets instead of liabilities. Right now, the existing accounting, it, it favors using credit and sovereign debt. And the after-tax yield of credit isn't keeping up with cost of capital. And the result is most corporations pursue dilutive strategies of acquisitions, share of buybacks, dividends, which are taxable. And they can't really hold billions and billions of dollars of capital and beat the cost of capital and generate shareholder returns. So this FASB accounting allows you to mark up and down the asset. It allows you to, rec uh, to recognize investor gains. You know, if Berkshire Hathaway didn't have Apple, it wouldn't be a winning stock. But it's not practical for a thousand companies to hold Apple stock as a Treasury Reserve asset. It is practical for them to start buying Bitcoin, and, and FASB's accounting opens the door for that. I think that the liabilities are the early crypto cowboys, the crypto tokens, the unregistered securities, the unreliable crypto custodians. For the industry to move to the next level, we need to migrate uh, to adult supervision. We're going to need big banks to become the crypto custodians. We're going to need Wall Street to take a role and we need to rationalize away from the hundred thousand crypto tokens you know yo-yo coins that people are manipulating to bitcoin Bit bitcoin is a is an asset without an issuer it is the one universally recognized protocol that's a commodity in the space so sounds like you think microstrategy as a stock is going to continue to command a bitcoin re bitcoin related premium then well, if you're not charging a fee and you're generating a premium and you're holding it over the long term, then one would think that uh, it'll be valued uh, at a premium versus the underlying asset. Well, I think the, the Bloomberg analysts that cover this, they're of the opinion that it's highly likely to happen uh, by early January. Sailor's positive sentiment is firmly rooted in two key factors. The upcoming Bitcoin halving event set for April and the impending approval of a Bitcoin spot ETF by the US Securities and Exchange Commission. Currently, the SEC is actively reviewing multiple applications for this ETF, with BlackRock emerging as the main player. Thanks to BlackRock's significant influence, there's an increasingly strong belief that, in the not-too-distant future, we'll witness the approval of at least one Bitcoin spot ETF. This would mark an historic milestone for the Bitcoin community a moment many have been eagerly awaiting for well over a decade. The green light for such an ETF would carry profound implications for the world of cryptocurrency and would serve as the gateway to substantial institutional investments, drawing interest from sovereign wealth funds, major corporations and even governments. Saylor envisions that this development will pave the way for large corporations to incorporate cryptocurrencies into their balance sheets. Saylor challenges the conventional macroeconomic metrics asserting that these metrics are often manipulated to paint a specific narrative, like labor statistics and inflation figures, which are selectively measured to create desired effects rather than reflecting the true state of the economy. In this context, Bitcoin emerges as an alternative, detached from the manipulations of the conventional economic sphere. Saylor also highlights that established corporations like Apple, Amazon, and Google will use their established relationships acquired over decades to swiftly acquire substantial amounts of Bitcoin through a spot ETF, bypassing the cumbersome processes involved in procuring the actual commodity. This disparity underscores the transformative power of cryptocurrencies in traditional financial institutions. Michael Saylor underscores the importance of embracing digital currencies as the economic landscape is changing rapidly and urges investors to leverage Bitcoin's potential to secure a more prosperous financial future. What do you think about the latest interview with Michael Saylor? 
And how do you think Bitcoin's trajectory in the coming months will impact the crypto market and the world of investing? Comment down below. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content just like this. We'll see you in the next video.